In this video I'm going to reveal 10 things you should know before you come to Switzerland. Don't make all the same mistakes I made when I first came to Switzerland. Instead, I'll show you all my tips and tricks to turn your trip into an unforgettable experience. Let's get started. Airports. There are actually three different airports in Switzerland. The most popular one is the one in the north, in the center, and that's Zurich. It's a really big airport with a lot of different options, so most of you will be flying in there. The second biggest one is in the southwest, that's Geneva in the French speaking part. And there's also lots of options, so you can fly into one and out of the other. And the third and sometimes cheapest option is Basel Mühlhaus, which is actually just outside of Switzerland on the border to Germany. And that's the third option you might want to investigate when looking at the cheapest option or the easiest option to fly into Switzerland. Let's discuss the packing list for Switzerland. You absolutely have to pack a variety of different clothes for your trip to Switzerland because one day it can be absolutely boiling hot and the next day absolutely freezing or you could be on the top of a mountain where it's really cold. So pack layers, rainproof jacket, warm underlayer like a sweater or a fleece and another t-shirt or a lighter underlayer and maybe some long johns especially if you're coming in winter. Now let's talk transport, train or car. Actually, for most people, train is the easiest option to get around in Switzerland, and it might surprise you. We lived here for over 12 years without a car and managed to get to absolutely every corner of Switzerland. So in most cases, train travel is the simplest and the cheapest, unless perhaps you're in a large group and then you might want to think about a car. But if there's only two of you or three of you, you definitely want to look at train transport. And speaking of train transport, one of the cheapest ways to get around Switzerland is with a train pass. So we've done a lot of videos on train passes and I'll connect those up above here for you to check out. But there's a lot of different options and you want to investigate which one's the cheapest for your particular itinerary. And we actually have a service for that. If you want to have a look at that, I'll put that in a link down below. But train passes are a complicated topic, but definitely worth spending time on because you can save hundreds of dollars by picking the right train pass. Money. We all want to talk about money. And in Switzerland, they actually don't use the euro as many of you will be using if you're traveling around Europe. They use the Swiss franc. So just be a little bit careful if you're coming into Switzerland with euros. It's a little bit limited where you can spend them. You can spend them in big shops and maybe in some restaurants and hotels in popular tourist destinations. But don't expect just to walk up to every single cash register and say, hey, I've got euros and expect them to take it. And the worst thing is, even if they do take it, they'll give you an absolutely horrible exchange rate. So try to have some Swiss francs on hand, but actually your best bet is credit cards. And speaking of credit cards, which ones do they accept in Switzerland? Well, in general, Visa and MasterCard. All the ones you get back home like Amex and Diners are not really accepted in Switzerland or very rarely seen. You'll definitely get a no, no, no in a lot of cases. And you're actually best to get a credit card that has no overseas fees or exchange fees. And one of the ones I use is Wise. They're an online bank and they give really, really amazing deals and low transfer and exchange fees. So if you want to check that out, I'll put the Wise link down below as well. You can take a look at them. I've been using them for over a decade. Now let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, hiking. I've been hiking for over 22 years in Switzerland. I've seen almost the whole country. And if you haven't even considered hiking, you should. There's everything from simple, easy, five, 10, 15 minute hikes to really long multi-day treks in Switzerland. And even if you're not an uphill hiker or you're not super fit, there's tons of great options. You can get a cable car to the top. For example, in Lauterbrunnen up to Menlichen, you can do a, what's called a panorama route, which is really simple. You basically wander along the top of the mountains and you get to see amazing views. So be sure to check out the hiking options wherever you're staying and do a little bit of research ahead of time so you know where you're going and what's to be expected on the hike, how long it is. Take some food and some water and some different kinds of clothes in case the weather changes, which it absolutely can in the mountains. And also use an app if you can, like Swiss Mobility, which is the one I use. I'll put a link down below for that one as well. It's really helpful in showing you the route with GPS and you can download all of those tracks before you go so you don't get lost hiking. Power and electricity. Sounds a little bit boring, but it's actually an important topic when you're coming to Switzerland because for many of you, there's a different power 
in Switzerland and you can actually fry some of your devices. So if you're bringing something like a hairdryer or something really high powered, just be careful because likely it won't work in Switzerland because they use 230 volts instead of 120. So you've got to be careful of that. And the second and perhaps most important thing is the power adapter. You need to make sure you've got an adapter to bring to Switzerland, even if you're coming from Europe, because the round plug that's used in the rest of Europe does not fit in the plugs in Switzerland. And likewise, most of the Swiss plugs, at least the three pronged ones, don't fit in the European plugs. So you need to make sure you have adapters on hand so that you're good to go to charge all of your devices when you're traveling in Switzerland. Let's talk about languages in Switzerland because it's quite an interesting topic. There's actually four official languages in Switzerland and none of them are actually English, but don't let that worry you because it should be English spoken broadly in all the tourist areas and most people speak even a little bit of English. So you should have absolutely no trouble getting around or finding your way or asking to buy something in most shops you go into. So which languages are spoken in the North and little bits of the West and East is German, it's the most popular language or the broadest language used in Switzerland, then French, then Italian, and in a tiny corner of Switzerland, they also have one called Romanche. But don't worry too much about what language is where, unless you speak one of those languages, of course. Just get to know a little bit of each language, learn to say hello, thank you, please, just a few words so that you can be a little bit polite and get to know the locals a little bit better. A lot of people ask me whether they can actually drink the water in Switzerland because of course in a lot of countries you can't and it's a big yes for Switzerland. You can drink all the tap water everywhere you go and they have these really cool fountains all scattered throughout the cities and the villages and you can fill up your water bottle if you're hiking or walking around and save yourself a few dollars and get some of the freshest and cleanest water in the world. And another thing to be aware of is that water in the restaurants is really, really expensive. In Zurich, it can cost even eight or nine dollars for just getting a bottle. So when you're in a restaurant, ask for tap water and it might be free or at least a lot cheaper than normal bottled water. So keep an eye out for that one. Let's talk about shopping. Just so you're aware, the shop opening times in Switzerland can be a little bit different from what you're used to back home. In some places, like in villages, they'll open really early, especially the supermarkets, and they'll close a little bit earlier than you expect. In the cities, they're slowly broadening their opening times, but a lot of normal shops like clothing shops and other kind of everyday shops will open maybe at nine or 10, depending, and close maybe at six or seven or eight, depending on the day of the week. And late night shopping is quite a rarity. And supermarkets are generally open from about 7.30 or 8 o'clock till about 6 or 7 at night, depending on the region that you're in. But just be careful to check the opening times before you go shopping so that you don't get caught out without any food, for example. And Sundays, they're generally not open at all, unless you're in a big city and then you can go to the main train station if they have a shopping area like in Zurich then you'll have the shops open there and also in the airport. But otherwise, Sunday shopping, except around Christmas, is an absolute no-no. And my top tip for visiting Switzerland is the guest card. In many cities and even in smaller regions, there are guest cards, for example, in Lucerne, in the Montreux area, in Geneva, and in Zurich, you have to pay for it. So it also might be worth it. Just keep an eye out for those and ask when you're staying at least one night in these places, whether you can get a guest card, what comes with a guest card. You get access to public transport usually, so that's free. You can often get free Wi-Fi within the city when you're moving around and you get discounts on a lot of different places, museums and other kinds of attractions. So it can be really worth getting your hands on one of these guest cards. Sometimes you even get free transport in the mountains in summer. For example, when I was in Sars Bay, which is near Zermatt, they had all free mountain transport for all summer guests which was absolutely amazing. So keep an eye out for the guest cards. Oh, and one last thing before we go, there's a Swiss train pass most people don't even know about, and you can learn all about it in this video here. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe down below for more Switzerland tips. See you in the next one.